aside from that, as I'm thinking about it, GTA Plus, what is that? Because I mm-hmm. think that was a big thing too. In the midst of the layoffs, we can't just leave that out, right? In the midst yeah. of the layoffs, <laughs> you got to talk <laughs> yeah. about it, man. Yep. You got to talk about it, man. Yep. Okay, no, so it's in the midst of the layoffs, there. you have that. So, hey, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the show radio. This episode 666 of the show. I'm your host, Andrew, and Daniela is traveling. And with me today is Aaron Shack. What's up, Aaron? We'll get right into it. How are you, man? What's going on? Dude, I'm I'm doing great, man. Thank you for having me back. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and talk about gaming with you. Of course, of course, hundred percent. And we're gonna jump right into uh Lawbreakers. So we're excited about Lawbreakers six years ago. It seems like so long <sighs> since the last time, right? Yeah, right. Because Overwatch was like brand new in that time. Overwatch and Battleborn. Do you remember Battleborn? Lawbreakers. Yeah, yeah. There were a couple of games that were kind of all in this similar genre, and only one emerged superior, I guess, or or was able yeah, to I'm, monetize. I I cannot I cannot believe that we're at a place now where we can potentially play this again. So so I have an issue that I wanted to share with you though yeah. in regards to this because as excited as I am for Lawbreakers, so we can actually just read a little bit about it here. Uh, so Lawbreakers, the former Gears of War designer has been promoting the new launcher on X, a Lawbreakers 2.0 fan project, uh, makes Cliff Blazinski's dead FPS playable again after six years. But there's an issue. So, so I'm going to ask you, have you have you checked it out at all? No, Were you I able haven't... to check it out at all? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. And so, so I'm holding out hope for it. I'm definitely holding out hope for it. But there's an issue that I'm having right now. So I want to show you what the issue is, right? So when I go to Lawbreakers, you know, this particular website, Uh Uh, This website has a download that you're supposed to grab, which is the launcher. And then it gives you the installation on what to do to get to a place where you can actually enjoy this. This game was was great. I don't know. I I haven't met anyone that didn't like the game. I think the main issue that we're having with the game is lack of players, right? Yeah. Uh, The the gravity stuff was cool. The the. so I don't think necessarily we had an issue with the game itself other than uh, user base, right? So I got excited. I went to this website. I'm like, finally, we'll get a chance to revisit it. When I click here, nothing happens. I can't click on it, man. Oh, no. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah, That's so... Not a good so... Start. <laughs> But I mean, I've seen people playing it, so it's gotta, it's gotta work. It's gotta be a technical yeah, I, issue or something. I hope so, man. Out, I hopefully. hope so because I'm really excited because I really want to check it out. But uh, what do you do? You remember anything from Lawbreakers? Like, yeah. you know, any fond memories? You know, did you did you have any dope battles? Yeah, what, what's your? I, I did. Uh, there's probably still videos on the channel. <laughs> but yeah, dude, like. You know, the the gravity stuff, the fast-paced combat, it's a little faster than Overwatch. So it, it differentiates itself in some ways, and it's it's got sort of that cyberpunky looking theme to it, which is unique and different. So, I mean, it's different enough that these two things can coexist, right? We know of a lot of character shooters, Valorant's out there now. There's all sorts of games that are using this same archetype, and they're allowed to exist, and, and they don't have to, like beat the other into submission and, and completely, you know, destroy that game from the universe. I'm really happy to see this coming back and I, I wish it the best. And I, I hope pretty soon we can get on it. And uh, do, do you, you think, know, do you think it's in, uh, one that you're fun. definitely going to spend a little bit more time on since you haven't necessarily seen in a long time? I mean, I want to, right? Yeah, dude, I have so much nostalgia for it. And, and maybe that's part of it is that it was gone and now it's back. And now Overwatch is in kind of a reduced uh, capacity right now, where they're not they're not boxing at their highest weight class. So this game has a chance to be welcomed into the scene by people that are kind of like exhausted by how Overwatch has been handling things. You know, new players can come into this and and be excited about it. So I don't know. Maybe its absence right. makes the heart grow fonder. Uh, <laughs> but it's so it, it was just such a fun game for its time and even back then it felt underrated 
And, you know, Cliffy B was always trying new projects after Gears, you know, just trying to see what would land. And he was running his own studio and dropping all these different games and, and nothing. Even the bicycle take, one he really had at one point, right? That remember from... that one? Was that the, yeah, something um, like that? Yeah, Radical yeah, yeah. Heights, you remember uh, Yeah, that? with the bicycles. Is that a different one? <laughs> Okay, it's nineteen eighties, cell shaded. Yeah, with the bikes, yeah. Battle yeah. Royale with the bicycles. Yeah. Yeah, I played a little bit of yeah. that. Radical Heights was crazy, man, but you know, it got oversaturated in the Battle Royale markets. Another another game competing with Fortnite, very obviously. And, you know, as interesting and cool as it was, it doesn't have the fidelity that a game like Fortnite has. So wasn't able to really stand the test of time. So you know, it's it's always cool to see people like him and these other guys, you know, like Marcus Lato and stuff that have they've made iconic games that we forever. will love and talk about forever. And we're always watching them to see like, hey, what are they going to do next? What studio is he at? What type of game is he making? We're always going to keep an eye on what they're doing. So anytime we get to see one of their projects, yeah, I'm always going to be curious. So. So yeah, so yeah. the the thing I was thinking about when you were talking about like, you know, some shooters coming back. So what do you think is going to happen when the Marvels one come out? Mm -hmm. So now we have we're playing with different, you know, uh, titles now because Marvel is introducing uh Rivals, right? And that should be exciting for the scene since mm -hmm. Overwatch has been on a slump and they recently canceled the the thing that they canceled. So um any thoughts on that cuz I know we haven't had a chance to talk about that because that's there's a big gap that needs to be filled when it comes to, you know, this, this genre uh, of, <laughs> you know, of play. Of course, you know, I am super, I'm a super fan. I believe I'll say it, you know, of Paladins, you know, I'll say it super fan. Right. Uh, but there's other titles that are out there. Yeah. yeah so so what, do you, what do you say about that? You know, with, with the stuff that we have. I'll second Paladins, man. It's a, it's a great game and we always have fun with it. So I'm excited to get back into that. Um, but when it comes to Rivals, I think it's different enough to to be allowed as well. It does sort of have a similar art style. It's got sort of this anime, you know, comic booky looking aspect to it, and it it has almost like a Japanese design to its to its look. So it's it's already something different and new, and it's not using guns in the way that Overwatch and Valorant and all these other games. You know, they're all just shooters at their core. This one is literally just superheroes brawling. So whatever their powers are, if Iron Man's got lasers and missiles, then that's what he has. And if, you know, Bruce Banner turns into the Hulk and starts punching people, like, that's going to be, be wild. So it's going to be fun, so much man. fun. And if they do the same thing that Overwatch <laughs> does, and they drop characters, you know, every so often, you know, yeah, we're going to have a blast with it. So hopefully, hopefully it it ends up being great. I, I, do I got believe. my hopes up for that one. It's not my genre. No, nah, I do believe it's going to be great. I'm very I, I, do, I really do believe it's going to be great. So next one that we have here is uh, this one here. You brought this up, okay? So mm -hmm. uh, former Blizzard boss Mike Ibarra uh, would like to tip developers. And it says here, I know $70 is already a lot, but some games are that special. So what, what's your take on here? This is, you know, you wanted to bring this up. You wanted to bring this to the table. Uh, so, so here we are. Uh, so, so talk to us about this particular uh, situation. So they're making the games. They're getting paid to make the games. They have a, potentially a salary or depending on the contract for the game. And I want to hear your thoughts about bringing this to the table. What's your take here? I need to know yours too, but I'll, I think it's interesting the reason why I wanted to bring it up is because instantly gaming press everywhere was like, let's bash this guy into oblivion because, like, this is ridiculous. You know, we should just pay developers better because, I mean, if you implement a tipping system, it's going to go to the CEOs and whatever. You know, like, that money's only going to funnel up to the top. It's not going to it's not going to rain down on the lessers here which end up doing most of the work and they're in charge of all the artistic decisions and stuff. I think is that he's, he's well-intentioned. Like he, he thinks like, Oh, this would be like a, in a perfect world, a nice idea of like, wow, if you really enjoyed a game, like a chance to further compensate the developers. And if it were to be able to magically only be able to go to the people, like even if they leave the studio, 
like they get like a royalty check in the mail, right? Like that would be really cool. So that's how I replied to it when I saw it on Twitter. I was like, you know, I get your intentions are pure and you probably mean this in like a really nice way. And I think typically what I do is like if I really enjoy a game, I'll buy it for a friend, whether it's on sale, whether it's full price, if I can afford to do so, you know, or I'll tell friends about it or I'll make a video about it. There's a tons, tons of ways that you can evangelize a video game that you really enjoy and get other people into it, which in turn ends up supporting the developers without having to fork over a bunch of cash or necessarily implement a tipping system, which, you know, the same thing happens with your server at a restaurant. Like sometimes those tips go right to the, the person or sometimes the bus boy grabs them all and uh, stuffs it in his pocket. Or sometimes it has to be input into the system and then the manager, you know, either takes his cut or whatever and then he sprinkles it on down the chain and usually the bus boy gets like the least amount of tip out of all of them. So it's it's not going to... It's not going to work in a real world context to tip. So I think the idea is nice. It's noble in a way, but the implementation by our industry, there's just too much politics and stuff that will happen there that it's just going to be taken advantage of. So it's a nice idea, but I don't think we should slam on him super hard for it because I think he had good intentions. If he didn't, I, you know, it might have been more obvious. He'd be like, I wish I had gotten tipped, you know. I wish they could have given me more money as the as the boss yeah, of the I, movie, um, you, know? you have more on that? I don't know. No, I think yeah, that's so, it. So it says here, <laughs> let me just go up here. While acknowledging that most will dislike the idea, Ibarra says that when he beats a game, he has often thought, I wish I could give mm. these folks another 10 or $20 because... It was worth more than my initial seventy dollars. I'm not against anybody getting paid. I, I, I think that's where I stand with yeah. that. If there's a way to compensate for an experience that you've enjoyed that is not necessarily directly tied to a DLC, I don't see why why we can't do that, right? If they have a a system in place, and sometimes it's not mm -hmm. going to be you know, from, you know, the publisher or the developer side for that particular system, it's probably going to be like a, a Kofi or, or something else, right? If you really want, you see what I'm saying? So if you really oh, want yeah, to there give you them, go. Yeah, that's a that's good what I'm point. Saying. So if you really want to, you know, tip <laughs> okay. the developer for something that you experienced and you really enjoyed, then if they have those platforms set aside, you know, especially if you can put it on a link tree and all the different type of trees that that we do uh, for all our links and and the things that we're we're doing, um, I don't I don't see anything wrong with that. I really don't see anything wrong with that. And and maybe I'm just um, I don't know if that's premature. I mean, I think that's fair. You know, any additional thoughts on that? I don't think that's a wild idea. I don't think people should be against that. I, I do think people should be adequately compensated for their work. And, you know, if there's a way to to further do that, there there's probably only a handful of games where you would feel like doing that, though. So, I mean, it's not like it's not some crazy concept here that's going to be like spun out of proportion. But I think people immediately jumped on the idea that Americans are super in obsessed with our tipping culture. And, you know, they don't do that in Europe. They think it's stupid. And in a way, it kind of is. You could just pay your workers better, and then you wouldn't have to tip them at all. Uh, but now we have to tip the cashier that has no, you know, they don't even make your coffee. But, you know, because they spun the iPad around to you, now yeah, you got to You know what's interesting about that? <laughs> <laughs> what's What's interesting about that is, uh, when yeah, you do get your coffee, you know, sometimes they skip the tipping yeah. part. Like I noticed that I noticed that some oh. places where I would get the coffee rather than giving me the option to do the tipping part, they'll skip it just to finish the transaction. What if I wanted to give you five bucks or 10 bucks? Right. And I, I, I don't know. I think I think it's an interesting thing. That's but if true. individuals are, are working extremely hard. And we are enjoying some amazing games. Mm -hmm. I know we talk about the games that we enjoy all the time. 
you know, whether it's a shooter or it's a platformer or what have you. And we've been playing these games for years, right? Why not reach out to an individual who has like a Kofi or a link to you and say, hey, you know what? You know, coffee's on me today. Or, you know, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. But I, I do agree that if you have the opportunity to yeah. to to give and, and bless somebody with a couple of dollars, I don't see anything wrong with that. I'm good. I'm good with that. I think I think we both agree there. Okay. I dig it. Uh, so state of the stream, I definitely <laughs> want to talk about that. What do you yeah. think the category is that is performing the best on Twitch right now? If you were to say, what what's the category you would give it to? If you were to say. What would you give it to? My guess uh, you maybe know, just chatting, you know, unless it's a video you are game. A winner, okay, you are a winner, okay. Is it? <laughs> so, oh my god, is it? Million. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. No way. Two hundred forty-nine million. Oh so Grand Theft Auto is uh, next on the list. Then the League of Legends, then Valorant, mm -hmm. CS:GO, Fortnite, Dota, Apex, Call of Duty, and Overwatch at the end. Okay, so that's where we are. So, so yeah, so just chatting Ooh. is doing really, really well. And in terms of the numbers, I'm going to go back. I'll bring back that chart in a second. Um, I just want to show you uh, this one here. Yeah. So it has uh, 1.774 billion in October, and it's now 1.777 uh, currently, well, as of March, right? So, so a little bit of bump mm. with that. But I'm curious to see if they have any numbers like that when it comes yeah. to uh, YouTube stuff. I know this is specifically the Twitch realm, right? But I'm curious to see if they have anything like that related to to the YouTube stuff. Yeah. So I know that we've been out of the Twitch world for a little bit. I'll say that. Um, so to what degree are you following or watching anybody on mm -hmm. the platform? I'm just yeah. curious to to hear your thoughts on that. Still have friends that I watch, so yeah, there's the occasional live stream that I tune into. Are you yeah. surprised by this this uh, list though? Grand Theft Auto is still up there, <laughs> right? Yeah, that is a little surprising. That it's I, I always expect Fortnite and League and all these you know these other games that I don't quite partake in. I don't really understand the obsession with everything, but I know that battle royales are very. Uh, you know, some different happens every time. You can't predict what will happen, so that unpredictability makes it endlessly entertaining to people that enjoy that, right? Um, but yeah, with GTA, I don't know if it's just the role playing community that's really lifting that up even further, where it's like you have TV shows based on each character, and it's like, oh, we got to see what this lawyer is going to get into in his adventures in Grand Theft Auto, or what this, you know whatever it is, car salesman, you know, they can do anything in that game now with those role-playing tools. And I, I, and we also know that Rockstar bought 5M, so now it's like they might implement some of that in future titles in their multiplayer. But it is kind of surprising yeah, to me right? that I'm right about just chatting. Like, I, it's, right. it was like Not a so new category yep. only so many years ago where people were like, well, you can't just sit there and talk and, and, you know, get paid and get subscribers and all these various things happening. And then it blossomed into other things like music and, you know, right, the hot exactly. tub stuff. And the, yeah, right. <laughs> and the body painting. So it's branched out into a, a million different things there. But the fact that that has become the highest, I wonder if that will change the way Twitch does business. Maybe they're pivoting a little further away from gaming and, and deciding that they could do more lifestyle or camera style. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they some had sort. some additional resources yeah. there because this is very clear. This is uh stream elements. They produce this particular document, uh, which they've done this for, for quite some time at this point. So I wouldn't be surprised if Twitch decides to, you know, add some resources in this particular area. And if you think about some of the the stars that are, known and getting big deals whether you look at like uh kai sanat and and i show speed and some of those individuals and you you can see that most of their content well so let, let's i want to make sure I'm, I'm saying this you know as accurately as possible they mm -hmm. are talented in what they do first and foremost right 
So it's one thing to have just chatting, but it's another thing to yeah. watch someone who is extremely talented and yet they provide, you know, guests and different, you know, things that happen on the stream and re reaction. They're watching videos, they're breaking down, you know, stuff that's happening in the news. So it's not just uh, someone sitting down, uh, you know, with, you know, popcorn and they're just having a conversation with their viewers. It could be, it could be, uh, depending, depending on the individual. Yeah, so it can be, I think there's, mm -hmm. um, you know, Amaranth, you know, uh, she's, she's been a huge, uh, streamer for, for a long time. I think she, she's doing stuff on kick as well. Now, I don't know if she's still doing stuff on Twitch, but we have a lot of individuals that use that particular category and have done extremely well with, with that particular content. So, so shout outs to them, you know, and that is one of their main, uh, things that we know of, right. You know, they may have other businesses, of course, but you know, as far as what we see, you know, with Twitch, you know, that's one of the things that we've, we've seen. And of course, when you think about, um, what do you call the, the other thing? Um, ASMR, right? Those streams, you know, are, are those considered just, just oh, chatting? Man. They might, unless it has its unless own category. Unless it has its own category. Yeah. I mean, right. it might, it, it might be its own thing. Might be well. on so, that thing. But you did say something about, so I didn't want to talk about this, but I think it, we might as well just jump into it. Cause you mentioned, you know, Rockstar, uh, the layoff stuff. You want to touch on that? I think it just makes sense for us yeah. to talk about it. Uh, since you did mention, you know, the Rockstar stuff. Yeah, I saw that Take Two was laying off. Uh, what was it, five percent of yeah. the Yeah. So, so what's your company? take on that? Which is unusual. It, is it right? It is right. It's, That's it's what I'm saying. More layoffs, and it's it's right. disappointing. Right. It's upsetting. And, and what do you do? You you wish everybody well. Um, you make, you 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 hope yeah. that you know they get another opportunity. You know, extremely soon. And of course, you know, talent usually find you know, great talent places to show their talent. And that's why we have, you know, games that come out and we have one individual who is a designer at this place. And then next thing you know, they're a major player in another place. And I think we see that all the time. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, it's always unfortunate. It's not something that you want to talk about because, you know, we don't like seeing people lose opportunity, especially, you know, with their families, you know, depending on how long they've been there also with any company, because we've seen layoffs, since we've started covering games, right? Yeah. Right. We've seen that over the years, right? So, so it's one of those things yeah. where, you know, they, they've seen, you know, uh, families being born, they've, they've birthday parties, anniversaries and all that stuff. And then, you know, then they're at a place where they're, they're shifting seasons and then they have to leave the company because of the reduction. But aside from that, as I'm thinking about it, GTA plus, what is that? Because I mm. think that was a big thing too. In the midst of the layoffs, we can't just leave that out, right? In the midst yeah. of the layoffs, <laughs> you gotta talk yeah. about it, man. Yep. You gotta talk about it, man. Yep. Okay, no, so it's in the midst of the layoffs, there. you have that. So that's their subscription service. And they did up the prices recently, didn't they? <laughs> didn't they? So it you gets you like extra perks and bonuses in the game and then I I think you also get to download some of the other legacy GTA titles. It's like being a member of, you know, Ubisoft Plus or Game Pass or something, but you know, think of it for Rockstar. Uh yikes. It it doesn't look good when you do that and then you're also on the eve of literally one of the biggest video games like ever, like GTA 6 is going to reinvent how we make video games, how we react to video games, how we play video games. It's genre defining, it's console generation defining. I'm not, I'm not speaking out of turn, am I, in saying that it, it li literally is a cultural it event is. when a Grand Theft Auto game drops, whether you like it or not. Right. No, I definitely agree with that. It, it changes everything. Mm. And not only does it change everything, it stays for so many years while it's, you know, shifting, you know, culture yeah. and, you know, how people are even reenacting the trailers before the game even comes out. Because I'm, I'm sure you saw that, right? I think they recently did that for uh, GTA 6, where they're, mm -hmm. you know, their live action reenactment of the trailers that they saw when they first announced the trailer for the game and people are doing that so yeah so gta has always changed everything whether it's in election year it has shifted conversations so there's that 
mm-hmm. even back in the day when they were like, well, yeah, these are the yeah. reasons why, you know, our children are doing this, that, and the other because of this. You remember, I mean, it was all over the news, man. <laughs> yeah, I was there for all of it. I was like, Mom, right. don't believe what they said on the right. news. It's, it's going to turn, it's gonna turn your child into, <laughs> you know, this thing that you, you don't recognize because of GTA. Yeah. And it's like, no, that's not what does that, right? <laughs> so, so we're we're looking forward to GTA Six. You know, we're 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 pretty sure that it's going to be exciting. Uh, we're we're going to dive into that. And even now, even now, GTA Five is still one of the most played titles, even today, right? And uh, we shouldn't be surprised by that. We shouldn't be surprised by Golly. that because um, <laughs> of the story. The story can yeah. be its own movie if they do it right. Uh, mm-hmm. So, so there's that, and then you also have the online component of yeah. th- that particular title, which is absolutely amazing as well. And, and I do agree with you, man. It's it, it's life changing for a lot of folks, you know, especially you know there the, in the world of gaming and even the DLC packs that they introduced, you know, for for the titles as well. So you can't you there's there's really nothing wrong you could say about the title uh, if you understand, you know, the title itself, of course, the ratings and all that stuff. So there was that conversation about it too. You know how is it supposed to be rated? Uh, but um, but yeah, yeah, we're we're at a place now where we're still playing the title. Mm-hmm. And that's, I mean, they made an enduring game that stands the test of time. It's been over ten years at this point. It's been ported to multiple consoles and multiple generations. It's it's everywhere at this point, and everyone's you know at this point everyone's probably played it, and I mean it's only at that point of saturation where it's like oh now we should make a sequel because now it's like we're literally <laughs> the the faucet's running dry, and even as we're seeing there, people are game to watch it on Twitch even as much as they've played it themselves or playing it right now. It's still so entertaining and so random and so enduring that people would get on it. But another thing I would point out about that list is if you pull it up again, th- none no. of the new games are on there. Like, there's no Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. There's no Dragon's Dogma 2. There's no, no Hell Divers 2. Th- and these are games no, that are we'll really great. Look, and they're look, selling look. really well. <laughs> and they're the talk of the talk of the internet. But this gets back to your overall argument of, like, we just want remakes. We just want Call of Duty to be good and fun. Uh, we just want to be able to log on Fortnite every night. We just want to be able to play GTA, Overwatch, whatever it is. All these games right here. There, there isn't really a clamoring for new stuff or we don't care certain sequels. I mean, we kind of just <laughs> want care. the old thing again. <laughs> we don't even want you to make it better, like refine it into something new. Like, no, we want exactly the old we thing. We don't care, man. We just want. It back. So this is empirical we evidence just want, right there for your argument. We just want what we <laughs> want, man. Look at something. it, right? Valorant, much respect, even though I don't play it. I think it's a dope game. Mm-hmm. League of Legends, of course, right? Because yeah. you have the esports and all the stuff yeah. that happens with that and Valorant. Uh, then you have CSGO, of course, mm-hmm. you know, uh, OG, right? Fortnite, you know, culture shifter, right? Mm-hmm. Fortnite, Dota, esports, Apex, esports, Call of mm-hmm. Duty, Warzone. Legendary, right? Overwatch, you know, work in progress, right? I'm not going to beat it up, mm-hmm. but it's definitely a work in progress, right? <laughs> yeah. But there's yeah. nothing new here. There's nothing new here. Sure. There's nothing new here, man. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> it is just it an is observation, what it is. man. It is what it is. So, next thing that we have, we'll jump right into it, is the EA's Black Panther game will be open world job ad suggests so i haven't been following this uh you know extremely closely i think the the recent title that we saw with you know uh captain america and black panther and and that title which is uh i'm trying to remember the name of it right now but that's going to be legendary Mm -hmm. the way they have you know the actors acting while they're performing you know i think that's going to be legendary right remember that title what's that what's that title trying to remember it Marvel 1943. Right, Right. so so that's going to be absolutely legendary. So I'm looking forward to that. So this, though, what is this? Have you you dug into what's happening here? Mm Mm-hmm. So it's being made by Cliffhanger Games, and it is an open-world 
Black Panther game. We knew it was going to be a Black Panther yeah, game, but now we know yeah, let's open world. Up. So what does that mean? Is that yeah, Roman Wakanda? Yeah, let's see. Like... Um... <laughs> Okay, so let's see what it says here. Part of the job description reads that successful applicants will be instrumental in designing and populating encounters, systems, and and gameplay within a dynamic and evolving open world. Drawing upon a deep understanding of technical design principles and a passion for creating immersive sandbox experiences, this role demands close collaboration with design teams, AI engineering, and technical art departments to bring Mm. our game world to life interesting right so you kind of get an idea so you might see some ai generated pictures in there you might see some you know ai generated you know sections in the world if you will uh so that's going to be pretty common i don't think anyone is denying how ai is changing uh, the stuff that we do or say or how we experience even you know content and how we you know consume everything with content right uh, so it says here, in addition to leaders uh, from those games, mm-hmm. uh, Cliffhanger's team includes veterans of franchises, including Halo, God of War, Call of Duty, according to EA. So my thing is like, cool, I- I'm open for it. No pun intended. <laughs> right? No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here for it, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens, and um, we'll just go yeah. from there. But Rise of Hydra is yeah. definitely, you know, I really want to check that out, man. That looks too good. Too good. Beautiful, okay. Man. It lo- <laughs> it's definitely. Yeah. Once again, it's Amy Hennig, right? It's someone we know that makes these experiences that's like, dude, she's tried, tested, proven, and now she's coming into comic books. Yeah, like, it's going to be, gonna it's gonna be, gonna be incredible. really interesting. So I'm looking forward uh, to that. Uh, so the next thing I, I want to, to ask you about is uh, do you remember Keanu Reeves? Uh, I guess the speed scene in the Sonic movie, I I, I don't really remember that. But uh, according to uh, some of the things I was reading earlier, they were saying that uh, that Keanu was almost foreshadowed, no pun intended, pun intended, for shadow, <laughs> right? For 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 this particular uh, voice voice uh, you know performance, if you want to call it that. So I was like, wait, if that's the case, then I may have to go back and see mm. where they showed Keanu Reeves and the speed, you know, uh, part of the speed movie, you know, back in the day, which movie what? that they showed that in, where they literally told us that Keanu Reeves was going to be in the series. I, me neither. Me neither. I have no idea. I've seen right. Speed, so so, but I so don't what they're know saying what is like in the Sonic movie, uh, there is a part where they pay homage to Keanu Reeves in uh-huh. the Sonic movie. So now I have to go back to that and mm, see exactly okay. where they show it. So essentially, it's almost like a preview okay, of yeah. hey, you know, we're literally showing you who is going to be in the the world uh, of of Sonic next. Uh, I don't know if we were surprised uh, surprised by Idris Elba being in there, and it's almost like we shouldn't be surprised right. that Keanu's in there because we had a foreshadowing of him because they paid homage to him in the Sonic movie before they announced this thing here. So I'm all for it. I'm going to go back and watch the Sonic movie and, and, and see where they did that. I, I'm definitely going to send you like uh, maybe a timestamp or something like that and say, hey... This is where they talked about Keanu. This is where they show Keanu. And then we'll we'll see, you know. But in regards to mm. Keanu being here now, it just Alba's here, right? Jim Carrey's here. Like, how do you feel about that, man? Like, I mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some of those names are people that we don't expect to see in, you know, little animated comedy films and stuff like that. You know, serious actors or big action stars um, to all of a sudden be doing animated right. hedgehog voices. <laughs> it's kind of silly, but it's really cool. And it really speaks to how epic the Sonic movies have become and and how they've kind of mentioned that, like, hey, this is kind of the Avengers of the Sonic universe are being formed here. So we shouldn't be surprised if we see more star power building yeah, absolutely. up. Absolutely. So I'm excited this. for it. 
Uh, I'm definitely going to go back and see the Sonic movie. And there's some documentaries that um, I'll talk about offline with you. I just definitely hear your thoughts on it. Maybe it's something that we can discuss you know, another yeah. another show. But uh, with this here, this universe is only going to get better uh, because we are absolutely fans of Sonic. And the first Sonic rendering uh, with the fur, you know, Ugly Sonic. I'm glad Ugly Sonic didn't make it because we spoke, <laughs> right? We're not for it, right? Yeah. The whole world yeah. looked at the first... No, because oh Shadow would have looked really ugly, man. If they went, can you and kept imagine going with that design? Can you imagine if they went with you know? Dude, that would have been horrible, yeah. bro. Like, so, so now we have exactly the way they're yeah. supposed to look. You know, just paying you know extreme dope homage uh, to a series that we've loved growing up, and I'm excited for it, man. I'm excited for it. Uh, so, so the next one is definitely you. I definitely want to hear your thoughts on this. I didn't do uh, too much uh, research on this, but you wanted to talk about this, and I'm like, okay. Aaron wanted to speak about it. We're going to mm. put it in here uh, for, for the show. Star Wars Outlaws, $110 and $130 editions prompt a collective sigh from potential players tired of season passes and ill-advised early access period. So are these prices the actual? St- like, are th- what is happening here? Yeah, that's actual prices because it's one thirty for the, and that's in American dollars. You know, it's more if you're Canada or Europe. Uh, but yeah, one thirty for the ultimate edition, which includes I think three day early access and the Jabba the Hutt DLC or whatever, and probably some costumes and whatever. Um, and I think it expresses a fatigue that, especially with Ubisoft, but also with a lot of studios where it's like. Dude, you're nickeling and diming us for, like, stuff that should just be in the game. Like, Jabba the Hutt, essential Star Wars character. If we're playing a game where we're a bounty hunter, we're members of the criminal underworld, like, this guy's the mastermind of that underworld. It it would be like coming out with the, the Jedi Survivor games, you know, that series, and not having Darth Vader and being like, well, if you want to fight Darth Vader, it's ten ninety nine, you know? And it just... It builds up, and that is so much money. We're already struggling, a lot of us, to even adapt to this new $70 price point, and you have multiple games coming out a month, like you'll have Final Fantasy and Dragon's Dogma and Rise of the Ronin, and a dozen other games, they're priced at 70 bucks, and you know we're having to make choices you know, for the year about, like, man, how many games can I actually afford to buy and, you know, can I afford to do something wild like this so I can play an extra 30-minute DLC or, or whatever it's going to be, right? So, I mean, it, it is very annoying, and it's it upsets me, and I wonder, will we actually do anything about it? Are we just going to whine on Twitter for a few days and then buy it when it comes out, no problem? Or wait till Black Friday, wait till it's, you know, $5 10 years from now? I think that's the echo I'm hearing from a lot of PC gamers is like, well, just wait until it's $2. And I'm like, yeah, but I mean, like, it's going to be a good game. I think we kind of see that a lot of people are making the, the Red Dead Redemption 2 comparison. You know, this is this is Red Dead for Star you Wars. Think, like, you think it's going to be good? This you is. It's, it's be massive. Good? You know, we know <laughs> it should be. But, man, I'm worried about performance issues and optimization. That's been such a curse on gaming, especially in the last several years. I think games are either ported to PC or even console stuff on day one. We're just having so many issues with games like that that I'm concerned. Um, But it looks like it'll be a great game, and from what we've seen, it looks really great. But I I gotta see it once it's actually in people's hands or or more gameplay footage that's not so... uh, curated in that ubisoft way like the division trailers and watchdogs everything is so meticulous and and scripted in a way to look really amazing i want to see what it's like uh yeah. in this bare bones aspect but yeah it's, uh, i i guess i wonder if if this will impact any change or if players will revolt and if ubisoft will put out a press release and say oh my gosh we're sorry let's just do the 70 dollar edition but it turns out if you sign up to their Ubisoft Plus, you get the Ultimate Edition, 
for only the cost of your monthly subscription to their service. So if you're already part of that, you're good. But if you're not, if you're someone that likes to buy things physical or purchase your games as they come, whether they're digital or not, hmm. you're a little out of luck. So I guess it, it just okay. depends. I mean, that's fair. $110, $130. I know we we have been very fortunate uh, to, you know, see certain titles or receive certain titles, mm -hmm. you know, for review or streaming, you know, options and stuff like that. So we may not necessarily see, and I'm just being, you know, very, very, you know, honest in this regard. We may not necessarily see the hit of the $130 or $110 because of the nature of what we do as creators, right? So I'm going to, I'm, so I'm going to do that. Right. But for those mm -hmm. who will, right. For those who will, this article is, was published on the 10th of April, 2024. This title is not coming out until when? Later this year, right? Later this so year. So you have time, All right? So let's just, let's just do that mm -hmm. $5 here, $10 here. You have time if this yeah. is a title that you're really looking forward to to save to get to the one hundred ten dollars, one hundred thirty dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, for you know your your heart's desire uh, to play a title that you know, and I do agree it's going to be good because most Star Wars titles are good. You know, they're at least a five point something, right? Mm -hmm. They're never below that, right? Right on average, right? So I'm just being fair yeah. there. Uh, so I think that if this is something that you're looking forward to, and if they do release it at the end of the year and it's not pushed till, you know, I guess, you know, next spring or January or something like that, you have plenty, plenty of time to, you know, start, you know, saving and stuff like that. Take advantage of that. And if you are one who is considering, you know, getting into the reviewing and the streaming stuff like that, you, you may have, you know, uh, that, that may not even be a number that you're looking at. You know, you just create your content, reach out to a company. And hopefully they'll give mm -hmm. you exactly what you need. So I think there's different ways to choose the next words carefully here. Approach this, right, <laughs> uh, professionally, and, you know, it could be to your benefit. Sure. So, so there's that. Any final thoughts here? No, I think it makes sense, you know. You, they're giving you this time, I guess, to, to save money. I think for the average gamer, it's definitely a concern. And... You know, if that's an addition you want, you either save up for it or or you start your protest right. or whatever you 100%. want to do. Uh, so uh, PlayStation, you're the PlayStation guy. Um, mm. I have a PlayStation. <laughs> I have PlayStation 4. <laughs> I have a PlayStation 3. I have yeah. a 2 somewhere. I do not have a 1 here, but you have PlayStation 5. Mm -hmm. What's happening with PlayStation 5 right now? Uh, one of the recent things that, that I did see, uh, which games will get Sony's uh, PS5 Pro yeah. enhanced label are you are you thinking about that are you concerned about that do you care about what's happening in, in that particular space and because you have a playstation you have you have the floor you know this is this is you what what do you think about it what, what what's your thoughts on the playstation stuff right now do you care about a pro i don't you really don't? do Nah, I don't do the pro. I don't do the mid gen refresh. It's usually such a marginal thing and it only affects a handful of games, maybe. And developers aren't going to change the entire philosophy of a game just to market to that those people there. So it's it's not like forcing us to upgrade the way an actual new generation does, where it's like, oh, if you want this game, you got to buy the PS6, you know? So to me, it's it's fine enough to skip unless you're really concerned about resolution or little issues with frame rate. When they introduce stuff like um, your your NVIDIA technologies, you know, we're just now getting into like ray tracing and now path tracing, and uh, you, you have all the NVIDIA AI stuff that that it computes and creates frames and all these things. When those things start hitting consoles, that might be the refresh I would opt mm. into. But I bet that's a PS6 problem. It's it's not a pro. Yeah, I, I think that, that we can solve you know, the fact that there's still games that you need a PlayStation Five to play. Um, we I know we talk about it often enough. Over the next couple mm. of years, that's not going to be a thing. That's going to be a thing anymore because we're seeing a lot of the games show up on PC. It's going to be 
it's, it may get to a point where we see the game get to PC just as fast as they're being released on the actual platform themselves. Maybe that's wishful thinking. I'll just throw that in there because we know how the internet is, right? So uh, Sony's yeah. unannounced, but widely expected PlayStation 5 Pro uh, should run games at 60 frames per second uh, with ray tracing upscaled to 4K resolution using the console's fresh PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution technology. Now, I have an issue here. Um, it's um, not a PlayStation issue per se, but the fact that Hellblade 2 is running at 30 frames, mm. you know, and on the Xbox console, I know we didn't talk about that, but the fact that it's locked at 30 yeah. at this stage of the game, I know that's a sidebar. Yeah. So it is what it is. Uh, this is Sony's preferred standard uh, for PlayStation 5 Pro, the Verge reports, though Sony will also allow games to boast of being PS5 Pro enhanced while offering lower frame rates if they still offer a boosted maximum resolution on Pro compared to how the game runs on the vanilla PlayStation 5. Now, honest question here. Do you care about this? Hmm. I like okay. running my games. Okay, at so we're agreeing. That's we're agreed the only in. controversy, in. right? But someone going into yeah. a store to get their game or yeah. they're downloading the game. Uh, do you think they're they're really focusing on that? I know we could say yes. There's a small percentage of individuals who do focus on that. There's an individual who just want their games to come out and they enjoy the game. Uh, you know, uh, not a lot of issues. You know, maybe patching here and there, but overall they want to have a great experience. But when I play games, I guess you know the point I'm trying to make here. When I play games, even we're even though we're still playing like a Destiny two and a Warframe, you know I'm playing them at least sixty frames per second. I'm not thinking about the the ray tracing and the and, and all yeah. the other things that are technical. I just want to enjoy the game, right? Even Warframe has that new uh, DLC that came out not too long mm -hmm. ago. And I'm playing that. I'm enjoying the world, and I'm enjoying the, like the sound effects, and and everything is like is so so wonderful. But I'm not thinking about which is active or not active in the settings, you know, for those things. I know people think about it, but how much of it do you think about when you're playing games? Does it come up at all? Not really, because I mean, once I picked up Dragon's Dogma and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which I think for those Dogma's thirty. Even though I'm playing it on PC, I think you can crank it, but certain areas won't render well. Cities get a little rough. Um, but with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, it's like they're actually recommending that you play it in the, the quality mode, uh, which is like 30 with good visuals. And it really, like the way the action plays and the way everything looks, it really doesn't bug you. You forget about it like immediately. So while I might be a stickler, like I love having 60 frames, like at the end of the day, sometimes it doesn't even matter. And sometimes it's not super noticeable. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. So I don't know. the last section here says the thir a third option allows for a game to be described as PS5 Pro enhanced despite having no frame rate or resolution boost. If its developer enables new ray tracing effects for a visual difference, this too could qualify games for a PS5 Pro enhanced sticker, the report continues, which Sony plans to display on game boxes and on digital store pages. Now, for me, totally not related, but I think it's important to have these things, you know, and, and yeah. the podcast and the conversation that we have because someone does care about this, right? Someone does care about this and, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, for me, at this point, it seems like I'm probably PC all the way. You know, unless something changes in the future, uh, but uh, that's where we are uh, with that. But you know, I, I think it, it's a it's a cool thing. I my my thing with with PS Five, if I have any uh, like conversations surrounding it, how I feel about the system is the exclusive stuff, right? I think that's usually the only conversation that makes a difference for individuals who are waiting for a game to release on another platform, and PS Five still has it. Or maybe Xbox still has it. And you're like, will it ever make its way? Will there ever be like a cross play with, you know, other systems and communities outside of that? But we're seeing Spider-Man go to PC. Miles Morales went to PC. Of course, we expect the other Spider-Man too to go to PC at, at some point. So 
So we're we're getting to a place where we could just wait. And it's okay. <laughs> and, and it's okay. We're we're not necessarily yeah. stressed about it. And you know, we're not gonna, you know, cause a ruckus on social media about it. And and that's just the nature of some of the things that we're experiencing right now. Uh so so there's that. Okay. So we also have Last Ronin. I definitely want to uh, talk to you about that. Uh is becoming a live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Uh definitely a big Turtles fan. Um, any thoughts on that? What what's your take there? I'm excited, man. We know that there's a last Ronin game in the works, and so now we know that there's a movie also. So, I mean, that's more people that will get invested in that storyline, and it's it's not something we've seen adapted in movies before. So, I mean, that's the chance to expand and tell that story to a whole new audience. So that's going to be really cool, man. That's And it's going to be – we're going to be yeah. – crying in the theater and it's, it's gonna <laughs> be fantastic. we're watching now yeah. it's just everything that they've done with turtles even when you think about you know yeah. turtles shredders revenge but you still enjoy that you know quite a bit it, it's just a world mm -hmm. that not only kept expanding with the characters that we received but the gameplay is you know very arcade you know very you know drop in drop out and it's just a, an adventure that we continue to enjoy and i even went back and restarted you know the game to to play it again you know, just to, you know, get the, the stuff again and, and the, the power-ups and help, you know, the community, you know, asking us to pick up VHS tapes here and, and other things, you know, around the world and newspaper articles and stuff like that. Uh, that game, you know, has done a lot for, you know, the arcade mm -hmm. space, of course. You have uh, Streets of Rage 4, uh, which we still enjoy. And it's those titles, you know, make things like The Last Ronin uh, something to be excited about especially if you're a Turtles fan. So any any thoughts there? No, I'm I'm super excited, man. I can't wait. I, yeah, for I sure. I want to see uh, more. So Paramount <laughs> is, is uh, reportedly developing an R-rated uh, cinematic adaptation of IDW's <laughs> Last Ronin TMNT comic that will be produced by Walter Hamada and penned by Boy Kills World uh, co-writer Tyler Burton smith okay and i mean just the artwork man it's just it's just phenomenal mm -hmm. man it is it is absolutely phenomenal so so those are my thoughts there super excited about anything turtles uh and we're we're just a big turtles fan here any final thoughts here yeah i think as far as the movie and the video games go we're definitely in an advent of comic book stuff you know we had the mcu taking off for a while we have marvel spider-man 2 that just dropped and now you got the black panther game the captain america and black panther game the iron man game that motive Studios working on you got the blade game that's in the works and you got the last ronin game so you're gonna have your pick of all your favorite heroes and all your favorite storylines Truly an interesting time to be a comic yeah, 100%, 100%. No matter what Before it we is. get to the last uh, topic and before we close out, um, anything on Fallout for you? Have you checked it out yet? I haven't. Have you? I watched it episode is really good. one and it's, <laughs> it is. it's really good, man. You got to <laughs> watch it. it, dude. I think they, they did, did it. it. Okay, I so, think they so nailed good. it, man. Yeah, and the way the video yeah, adaptations One of the things I did see go, is $80,000 yeah. increase. And revenue for a Fallout series since they launched uh, the Fallout TV show uh, this past week. Because they launched it, was that Monday or Tuesday? I think it was Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, early, early this week that yeah, they so, launched it. And, you yeah. know, a lot of great reception. And that's the vibe that I'm getting. And also a lot of individuals are jumping into Fallout the game because the TV show is out right now. Last but not least, though, um, Xbox. Microsoft is bringing its Xbox dashboard to the web. With party chat and more, Xbox Cloud Gaming is getting an updated interface with features you'd normally find on an Xbox console. Okay, so now this is interesting because one of the things that they want to do there, um, it says here, uh, previewing a new Xbox Cloud Gaming interface today. Well, not necessarily today, today, uh, but that includes the social features and UI you normally find on the Xbox dashboard. The new interfaces include access to a web version of Xbox Party Chat, so you can use a browser to join a call with friends and set up a dedicated Xbox desktop and mobile apps. So I think that is pretty cool. Any thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I'd like to know a little more, but I mean, that's that's really interesting because when I went to PC, I pretty much left all that behind. And I have a lot of friends on Xbox, you know, that maybe I haven't talked to in a while that we used to play games every day, whether it's Destiny and Raiding and Crucible and trying to do bounties and quests together. Um, this is a really cool feature that once again shows that Xbox is a little more concerned about the wider ecosystem. It's not just about their plastic box. This is prepping for the future of like, hey, we're going to be a prominent force on PC and elsewhere and of course in the cloud and we want you to be able to connect with your friends no matter where you are so if you know you're at work or you're <laughs> wherever you are you can just jump in that party chat while your boys are playing call of duty and be like hey man i'm on the way home i'm just you know typing up this report at work <laughs> so you could do all sorts of things with that um yeah i just Absolutely. i think that's a sign yeah, of the time so, yes. i don't know if the, and it's a good the app um, I haven't used the app if it's a, a big thing, a big deal. Mm. Uh, but the app on yeah. the desktop, you know, I'll I'll open that up, and of course, that's where you you'd play your mm. games, you know, on PC. Uh, so you could still see who's online and and jump in a party chat with them. So I've done that on the PC, even though I'll be playing uh, the Destiny on mm -hmm. the PC platform, and some of my friends are playing it on on the Xbox console. I'll do a party chat with them. They have the option of using Discord, but if they're still using the app, I think we could just do it that way. So, so the way we're able to communicate, you know, it's it's getting to to a seamless place, you know, in my opinion. And I think that we're we're at a great place where we're seeing a lot of these apps, whether it's your, you know, like a Telegram or WhatsApp or any app that gives you a desktop version, a web version, you know, a mobile app version. We're seeing a lot of those things, you know, across the board. So I definitely agree with you that you know this is you know a good thing. This is the next. Next step. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. Yeah. Good stuff. Any final <laughs> thoughts? Anything that you want to talk about that we didn't talk about that you want to mention before we get out of here? Oh, have Not you yet. done uh, the yet. new Destiny content Into the Light? No, but no thoughts on that I yet? I want oh, to Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I we'll definitely, have to tease that for next I definitely time. want to do it. That's on the that's, radar for sure. Um, I did an update earlier today, you know, you know, Tuesday update stuff. But um, I need to do it because there's some weapons in yeah. there that we got to go get. <laughs> we got to go get. Yep, we got to get that blast furnace. Wait, do you there's, have the new there's one? There's other guns in do there the too, but that's that's the big one. Okay, I don't we got to jump furnace. in and get oh, yeah, the new no. one, man. <laughs> I, I okay, need teammates. Right. We got to get right, in there, So, so let's, let's figure <laughs> it out. So let me see. Yeah, uh, we got to fight. Tomorrow night. What, what's the vibe? Wednesday night. What do you got? What do you got going on? Are you good? Are you good? Yeah, I got. Me. I'm good. I'm good. Wednesday is good. We can. Yeah, we can. We can nah, go. We got to defend dumb. the so, tower, man. So let's let's do that. Our enemies let's do that. are at the gates, man. Let's They're jump attacking. In. Uh, there's also a pulse rifle for for one of the. Yeah. Um, what do you call those things? A uh, dungeon. There's a pulse rifle in the dungeon. I don't know if they rotated that dungeon out. I still need to do that dungeon. So if it's not rotated out. And oh, that's right. We need to check that out. And of course, they that, they launched yeah. uh, the Whisper mission. That <laughs> that's out now, right? The Whisper is back, and oh, the Trevor yeah. mission is back. Remember Trevor, the little robot that I runs did, through I the maze and chases you. I don't your like. I don't like. That's that outbreak mission. perfected. <laughs> I don't like that mission, but it's back. We got to figure it out. We got to figure it out. Uh, but that's it for, for episode six sixty six. Yeah. I get that. That number is just ugh, right? But um, Aaron, you know, it was great uh, having Ooh. you, a great conversation uh, on games. Where can they find you? You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, everywhere, Aaron Shack, Aaron Shack 64. And uh, you can check out my podcast, The Shack Cast, and my website, AaronShack.com. Yeah, 100%. Thank man. you for having a pleasure. Me, you I find me it. here. Uh, on this YouTube channel, Andrew Alliance, uh, definitely like, subscribe, definitely check out Aaron. I'll put his information in the description below. And until next time, take care.